Occasionally we have teeth that are missing a cusp and we need to cap the cusp but they can't afford a crown or an inlay. So there's times we have to build them in composite. Now in this case it's obviously a fake case, it's obviously extracted teeth put into silicon uh, and that's why there's an upper and a lower tooth next to each other. I'm using a sectional matrix band even though it's the distal of the tooth that's missing and I'm just holding it in place with flowable. Uh, you'll notice that I used a flat plastic to hold the band against the tooth as I cured the flowable that holds that band in place. Now I'm putting a thin layer of uh, flowable over the dentine areas and a little bit at the distal just so it kind of acts like a wetting agent. Uh, now when I put the paste composite and pack it against that sectional matrix with the micro brush uh, there will be no bubbles because of the wetting effect of the uh, flowable resin. Now I'm holding that probe and I'm very carefully looking at the mesial marginal ridge and I'm using the mesial marginal ridge as a guide so that when I take everything out I've got a little distal marginal ridge that's the same height as the mesial. Now when we look at the uh, tooth I've already done the two mesial cusps, they're the easy ones because it's an existing tooth structure. So uh, we're building up a cusp on the distal. The, the distal marginal ridge is acting as our height guide and so is the mesial and the adjacent tooth structure. Uh, you can see I've built basically a cone or a, a pyramid of uh, composite and then we push it into the right shape with a micro brush. The micro brushes don't need to be coated, They're, they won't stick to anything. And then we use the probe and, and we use the uh, probe to take off the excess on the buckle and lingual first. So you can see it's taking off the excess there and then we lay it on its side and we put the tip down into the fissure area and we angle the probe up towards the cusp tip using the other cusps as a guideline. So basically if you have the fissure of a tooth at the right height and you have the cusp going up at the right angle then you'll be very very close to the right occlusal height. So it's just one of those little secrets with composite resin that if you put the cusp at, uh, if you put the fissure in the right place and have the cusp at the right angle then it automatically forms the right occlusal height. So here you can see I'm doing the other side once again a small drop of flowable then a cone of, uh, of composite injected using the micro brush to form that into a pyramid. So cusps are basically just little pyramids. So forming it into a pyramid. Notice that the point of the cusp is not at the edge of the tooth but it's actually quite some distance in towards the fissure. So it's uh, not quite halfway between the edge of the tooth and the fissure. Now you can see also that I'm not trying to make the cusps smooth. So cusps, if you look at teeth, they're not smooth. They've got uh, lots of ridges. The ridge on a cusp tends to go from the mesial, uh, sorry, from the tip down uh, mesially if it's a distal cusp and it goes distally if it's a mesial cusp. Just adding a little bit to the mesial cusp here, the mesiobuccal cusp is a uh, uh, was a little bit deficient there on the on the margin line so added a little bit of extra now we're just forming that that uh, buckle fissure pattern making sure it's in the right place so you basically put the fissure in the right place first and then you can put in the final anatomy um, just using kind of a tapping or a pressing motion okay you can't drag composite so you have to tap it uh, maybe uh, I've heard Jason Smith and call it a, a woodpecking motion now the distal marginal ridge is a little bit too sharp, it needs that nice roll and marginal ridges are quite tricky. You can see once again the flowable so there's no bubbles, a little drop of flowable and then the paste composite over the top. Now first of all just getting it into the right position with the micro brush and then we're using the probe, we're getting it at the right height compared to the mesial and often the, the marginal ridge has a little groove right in the middle. So. I'm assessing the mesial marginal ridge and then copying that height to the distal marginal ridge. Obviously if you make the distal marginal ridge much higher than the mesial one, when you go to check the occlusion, everything will be too high and you'll cut it all off. Now we have a little bit of a dilemma here because every time we squash that marginal ridge down to the right height, we then fill in the fissure pattern. So we've got a little bit of to and fro going on here where we squash the marginal ridge down to the right height, create that little uh, v-shaped groove in the middle there but then that fills in the fissure pattern so we've got to kind of dig out the fissure pattern which gets rid of some excess composite you can see a scraping the excess off 
and then we have to squash it down again and then get rid of it. Now it certainly does take a little bit of time to uh, form this anatomy doing it this way. Um, it takes generally a lot less time doing it in the mouth than I find doing it for a video. I think doing it for a video you just get a lot of performance pressure because you know that 10,000 dentists are going to watch it. So uh, the flip side of this of course is that if you just do a big flat composite then normally you end up with it really high in the fissure area, the middle of the tooth. And it's this area that takes the longest to adjust. So if you have the tooth high on a cusp tip, it takes hardly any time to adjust. To, to take a little bit off a cusp tip takes next to no time. But if it's high in the middle of the tooth in the fissure area, then it takes an enormous amount of time to adjust that with a burr. Unless you just get a massive coarse diamond burr and you just don't care and you just grind the heck out of the tooth. Now this, this uh, cusp is obviously not quite pointy enough and the tip of it was a little bit towards the buckle so I've just added a tiny bit more material so I can move the line angle between the occlusal and the lingual slightly more towards the fissure, more towards the middle of the tooth and then doing the same on the other side. So the, um, sometimes there's a limit to how high a cone you can get the composite to form into so you have to add a little bit more on. So this one I've just added a little tiny bit more onto the tip uh, always a drop of flowable first. Other people do it differently, that's fine. Uh, I like a little drop of flowable between every layer of composite just to act as a wetting, a highly filled wetting agent. Now you can see that I'm starting to develop a little bit of the ridge that runs down the cusp here. Okay, if you don't know your anatomy, just guess. Okay, it really won't make a lot of difference to the tooth, but just starting to guess about the cusp shapes and where the, the little ridges and uh, where the fissure pattern and what shape the fissure pattern should be is fine. There's a lot of variation in individual teeth and if you start to just sort of get this in your mind then you'll find that the, uh, the when you start doing ceramics it becomes easier to assess whether the technician's done a good job. Now finally I'm just using a 12 scalpel blade to scrape off the excess. Uh, in this particular case when you see the final photo there was absolutely no there was no uh, rotary instruments used at all. I actually did this at home where there's no dental chair. So it just goes to show you the sort of shape and form that you can get without actually using a burr at all. Now to get the, the um, overhang areas done with a scalpel is actually faster. And as you can see there at the end, we've got the tooth once it's had a little bit of uh, tint and, and a final layer of adhesive placed over it to give it that nice shiny finish. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, come to the Restorative Implant Practice Excellence page. Thank you so much.